It all started in 1964 at the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Clark Street, when the Whiskey Go Go opened and rock and roll took over the strip. This YouTube American Bandstand clip from 1964 features Johnny Rivers, the man who had captured the attention of late whiskey owner Elmer Valentine. I recently caught up with Johnny at Studio City Sound in the Valley. So Elmer said, I want to get this place up, up on Sunset. I want to get some gals to dance and this and that. And, and he said, and I want to call it the Whiskey A Go Go. And I said, what kind of name is that? Valentine's vision was to mix live music with a female DJ. The opening night was a smash, and then, you know, I thought, well, it's only gonna last a few days or something. And it kept going, it kept getting bit bigger and bigger, and people were lined up outside the door, and they were tipping the doorman a hundred bucks to get in the door way back then. That was a lot of money. The rock and roll era in LA arrived with a flourish. Go-Go Girls, the famous and not so famous dancing to the tunes. The Beatles are here. I went, whoa. The whiskey, you know, changed the whole thing. It brought life back to the Sunset Strip. Before then, it was just dead. Current club owner Michael Maglieri Sr. was there almost from the beginning, working for his legendary father, Mario Maglieri. For several years, it was Elmer did the booking. He was up in the office in the daytime. My father ran the club at night, and they were a, a perfect duo. Many were L.A. bands and others on their way to immortality. Arthur Lee and Love paved the way for the doors. Them, Jimi Hendrix, The Birds, Buffalo Springfield, Led Zeppelin, Janis Joplin, and so many more. Let's just talk about Love and The Doors, two LA bands. Love was great. Arthur Lee was one of the, just one of the nicest people you ever want to meet. And The Doors were opening for Love. Doors were uh, at the London Fog, which is next door upstairs. The ticket taker and the um, office girl saw them there, and they wanted Jim is what they wanted. The girls would go crazy over him. I mean, that's why they wanted him in here, was they thought he was hot. Unlike most clubs of the era, the whiskey booked the best regardless of race. Let's talk about Motown playing here. We were the first club to integrate. And when I say integrate, black acts didn't play white clubs, but we did it. So we were a big kickoff for Motown. Smokey Robinson, The Tops, The Temptations, Martha Reeves and the Mandelas. Stevie Wonder Club? Stevie, you name it. They were here. Smokey Robinson remembers playing the whiskey with the Miracles. Well, the Whiskey A Go-Go was the spot in LA at that time. It was, you know, the in club. I mean, the Miracles and Amigos, we played there all the time. The club so inspired Smokey, he recorded a hit song, Going To A Go-Go, as an homage to the whiskey and clubs like it, as this 1966 YouTube clip from Hullabaloo illustrates. Smokey collaborated with his guitar player and came up with the song. He came up with that, that going to a go-go riff on his guitar. Blah, da, blah, da, blah, da. So we loved it, so we wrote a song to him. And in the 1960s, when African-American artists had difficulty playing live venues around the country, the Whiskey A Go-Go felt like home. In California, you were cool. If you were black and performing in California, that was cool. I mean, you know, Mississippi, that was another thing. But for California, the magic at the whiskey continued into the 70s and 80s with bands like Blondie, The Stooges, The Ramones, X, The Motels, and The Police. The whiskey stayed alive because we followed the trends of the music, what was going on, what was current, whether it be you know, the punk or the hard rock or the heavy metal or the English metal. Led Zeppelin said the song remains the same, but not the music business. As the 80s swept into the 90s, the audience changed, as did the business. The 80s were off the hook. That's when the club started to take it, this place started to take a transition. The 80s took it into a more of a crowd scene of a open forum where people stood around and watched the show. It changed. My father is the one that introduced uh, pay for play. The re reason he instituted it, it was because of the fact that the record companies had pulled off the support to the groups. How do you keep it fresh? How, how, does, it, how does the whiskey survive today? It's real easy for me. I let my son do it. Michael Maglieri Jr., affectionately known as Mikey, is the president of the Whiskey. He does the booking and running of the club. He is also the keeper of the history. And the Morrison. The Morrison? I, I, I remember that. The Hendrix, the other Morrison. Hendrix was someone, some, someone painted that as an oil painter. The Whiskey Go Go is a living, breathing rock and roll music time capsule where you can still hear great bands making their own music history today as Johnny Rivers, who started it all 55 years ago, says. There was one place there just set the whole Sunset Strip on fire. 
The whiskey was honored in 2006 with induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, well-deserved for a place so embedded in LA rock and roll lore, and a place to still hear some of the great music of tomorrow.